All right. You know what we'll do? You won't wait now, then. I apologize. Next, we will uh, call then the Honorable Dennis Rue of Cookstown. I assume he's here. Thank you, sir. I hope I didn't say your name wrong. I don't know. You can correct me when you come forward. Roar. Come on up. You can take that center chair. The mic is already lit for you. Please remain standing. Raise your right hand for the administration of the oath. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony about to give here today is true, correct, complete, to the best of your knowledge, information, and belief? I do. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Please be seated. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And just so I'm clear, how, how do you say your last name? Roar. Roar. Okay. Mr. Roar, thank you for being here. Would you please address the committee with your opening remarks? May I address sitting or shall I stand? Thank you. It was just for the administration of the oath. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Scatari. Vice Chair, Chair Just do one favor for me. Pull that mic a little closer to you. I'm having difficulty hearing you. It's already lit, and if you just get a little closer, we should be able to hear you. I'm good. Perfect. Thank you, Chairman Thank you. Scatari, Vice Chair Person Gill, and Senators of the Judiciary Committee for considering my nomination today. I want to thank Governor Christie for nominating me to be a member of the Pinelands Commission. I am honored to be considered for this position, and I believe I will ably and honorably serve the Pinelands Commission. As both a lifelong farmer and an local, elected local official for two decades, I believe I bring unique qualifications and skills that would enable me to serve well and thoughtfully. I thank you for your time and consideration, and I would be glad to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, sir. Questions for the nomination? Senator, uh, Senator Baden. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much, and, and welcome. Um, obviously, um, you're about to, if you're confirmed by the Senate, you're serving on the commission, I would suspect uh, you will be faced with a very important vote on whether they should allow a gas line through the center of the Pinelands. Do you have a position on that at this time? Sir, I do not. Uh, Sir, I, I, have not, I have not been on the commission. I do not have the facts. I do not have anything that would be um, relevant to have a position. It would be premature to sir, have a can, position. Can you just pull that mic up a little closer? Loud, having sir. trouble hearing you still. Okay. A little closer. Sir, you're from South Jersey? Burlington County. Okay, and sir, so you have to be aware of this issue. It's been going on for some time. Were you aware there, there was a vote taken last year? Sir, so, Mr. Senator, I'm aware of three things. I'm aware there was a vote taken that was seven to seven. I am aware that the pipeline wants to go through the pine, pine lands, and I'm aware that it's a company called South Jersey. I swore to tell the truth, and that is all that I am aware of. Well, sir, all due respect, I mean, what is your position on, on the, the preservation of pine lands? I mean, do you think that we should go back on what was done, you know, back in the, under the Byrne administration? I mean, do you think that we should lessen the regulations? Mr. Senator, with all due respect, I have read the pine lands mission statement, and I believe that I could honorably um, justify being a member and abide by that mission statement. I, I really think that there's going to be many challenges and questions that come up, but I would always answer them honorably and with a rationale. And to give an opinion on a hypothetical situation would be wrong. Well, Again, with all due respect, I don't think it's a hypothetical question. And there was an actual vote taken. And I think this is probably the biggest issue to hit the Pinelands ever since mm -hmm. it was created. I, I, to, to come here and not have an opinion on that, I think, you know, I, I find it very disturbing that you have no opinion on the issue. And, and without a, and I got to be honest with you, without a straight answer, I, I could not support your, your nomination to mm -hmm. Pinelands because this is such a critical environmental area to come here without an opinion on probably the major issue that's ever been uh, addressed by the Pinelands, I think, I th I, I'm, I'm shocked that you don't have an opinion.
Senator Cornelli. In fact, before I go to Senator Cornelli, let me let, let me. Uh, How, how much do you know about the vote that was taken that rendered a 7-7 vote with respect to the pipeline being built through the Pinelands? I know that it was 7-7 seven to seven with one recusal. Mr. Chairman, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I, when I was nominated, I took the position that if you're a decision maker, if you're a juror, you should not go out and have opinions from an op-ed or anything else. You should listen to the facts. You should dissect the facts, distill the facts, and then use your best judgment when you become a decision maker. At this point, I am not. Well, I guess what Senator Bateman's concern is that uh, all the facts as known were already presented to the board as constituted today. Had you been on that board, you would have, or even not having been on that board, all of the relevant information that was presented to them during the course of that vote is available. Have you had an opportunity to review that information that's been put forward to start to consider uh, how you would vote? Yes, sir, and I removed myself from fact or fiction because I want to come to this board with a fair, clear, and open mind. So you're saying you could vote yes or no, you're not sure? I have no opinion today. I mean, because, I, the, you know, the, the, the criticism is that, you know, that the decision's already been made. That's the criticism. Let's, I want to get that out here right straight forward, because I think uh, what the discussions have been and what they continue to be is that, that your seating on the board, as well as the other nominee, uh, is already a de facto uh, maneuver in order to change the previous vote. That, that's what's out there. At least that's the consideration of probably members of the audience, members of this panel, and others. Some people may not think that, and, and that's not what you're suggesting. I'm saying that that's what's being said, that there is a consideration that your vote uh, is a, a change in direction, and it's, uh, your nomination reflects uh, consideration to move in a different direction. It, can you see the way in which that thought process has come together? Absolutely. You've explained it. I just took an oath to tell the truth. Mr. Bateman, Senator Bateman is the first person that has asked my opinion. Anyone that knows Dennis Rohr would know that I'm going, I'm going to do the best I can. I do not take this lightly. Um, so knowing what you know and, not, and, and, and being clear that you don't have, at least I, I didn't get a straight answer about that, but perhaps not knowing all the facts that you will know as a board member, do you have any inclination as to how in which you would vote on that kind of a vote with respect to that, uh, that pipeline? I have no inclination. I'm not l leaning to the left or leaning to the right. I am in the center. I would have no problem if any of the senators would like to speak with me. Um, I want to learn and I want to do the best thing for the Pinelands mission statement. Um, because let's just, for sake of argument, suggest that this committee releases you and the other nominees uh, today and then a new vote is taken instead of being 7-7, now it turns out to be 9-5. Uh, that would kind of lend credence to the argument that's been made by others that this, this is already in the bag already. I mean, you'd agree with that. I don't know, sir. I don't know how the other members would vote. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go to her, then I'll go. Uh, Senator Weinberg. Uh, thank you. I want to make sure I understood your answer to Senator Bateman's uh, question. Do you believe in the mission of the Pinelands Commission? Do I believe in the mission? I, I believe my answer was, I can honorably abide by it, and I don't, I don't know the word, but in, I don't I want to say in force. So all that would take would be a yes or no answer. Do you believe in the min mission of the Pinelands Commission? It doesn't Absolutely. take a, you know, any kind of an in-between. It's yes. just yes, I believe in it, or no, I don't. Yes, if that's the question, absolutely. Okay. 
So then you believe in the preservation of the pine lands, is that correct? I believe in the, in the preservation of the pine, pine lands national reserve. Uh, how did you come to be nominated to serve on the Pine Lands Commission? Do you know? Uh, the governor nominated me? I do know the governor nominated you. You wouldn't be before this committee. Yes, ma'am. But the question is, how did you come to be nominated? Did they? The process? But did it, not the process. How did the... Why were you nominated? Were you interviewed? Were you picked because of your vast environmental experience? Was it because of your political leanings? What was the reason that your name was chosen to be nominated for the Pinelands Commission? I assume whenever you received the call saying the governor would like to nominate you, you might have said, why me? Or what's the reason? Or some answer. Yes, the, the call was, was very brief, and the call was, if you were nominated, would you accept? My answer was yes. And that was basically the question I had. And the answer was, you've, you've been a steward of the land your entire life. You've a, a steward, a farmer, your entire life. Uh, you come from Burlington County. You lived in the Pinelands. Um, we would like you to serve. Um, just as my opening statement was brief, so was the conversation. So it, w it is because of the, or what seemed to come through, that your long residency in the Pine Lines? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So since you are a longtime resident and, and obviously a farmer, um, you had you haven't read anything about the pipeline, about the issues, about the fact that there was a seven to seven vote, about a question that somebody on the commission was asked not to vote, and nobody's quite sure to this day which ethics officer called him and asked him not to vote. There have been reams of newspaper articles and other media covering this. Have you followed any of that? Absolutely not. And one part of your question that I would have to tell you, until you just told me that someone was asked not to vote, it was only my knowledge that it was 7-7 seven, seven with a recusal. I, I, was not, I was not even aware of that. Uh, yeah, well, that has been written up. That's where I learned about it. It's been written up in the newspaper that um, somebody a commissioner on the Pinelands Commission was asked not to vote for some kind of a so-called ethics violation, but it's very unclear as to who asked him to step aside, whether it was somebody from the State Ethics Commission or the Pinelands Ethics Officer. Nobody seems clear, but that's been uh, publicized. Have you ever had any dealings with the commission as an applicant or in any official capacity? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. What, impre what impressions or views do you have of the commission now? Do you have any uh, impressions? Have Knowing that you're coming on to a commission that was a 7-7 seven, seven vote, pretty about as close as you can get to not release something or not change something. You, I would like to know if you have any impression about the way that commission is operating, has operated, in the, and will operate in the future. The impression that I have with a seven to seven vote, they must be free thinkers because Seven people thought different than seven other people, and they were not afraid to step up to the plate and say that. And that impresses me. Have you spoken to anybody in the governor's office or around the governor's office about the gas pipeline? Absolutely not. Perhaps understand based on Senator Bateman's 
uh, questioning and maybe following up on my own questioning, <coughs> why uh, people might be might believe that people who have long years on the Pinelands Commission are being replaced without adequate explanation, and they happen to be two of the no votes and no votes. Do you have any impression about that whatsoever in terms of your nomination? Do I have an, imp an impression? I know, I know the two folks whom term was up and I was asked to replace them. It was really, was, was, once again, I tried to stay open-minded and neutral and not try to make an impression or a judgment on someone I was replacing. Um, I, I, I want to go in and, and do my job as honorably and well as I can. Uh, and I'm sure the person I'm replacing has also. Um, <clears throat> who did you meet with in the governor's office about this, about your nomination? Who did I meet with in the governor's office? Um, I th think the gentleman's name was Brett Cavanaugh. The council's office, governor council's office? I don't know. It was, it was on the telephone. That's the only person you've met with or talked with about no. this appointment? I actually was on a conference phone and I believe his supervisor also was, was on the phone. Uh, Mrs. Lieberman, Mrs. Lieberman. I believe it was Mr. Cavanaugh's supervisor. I have not had a face-to-face -face meeting with any, I haven't come to Trenton and met with anybody uh, to discuss anything. Those are the only two folks you had a face-to-face -face meeting with. They weren't face-to-face, -face. they were over the telephone. What? They were over the telephone. I don't believe so. You were nominated for this position to replace long-standing folks on the Pinelands Commission without ever having, nobody in the governor's office chose to meet with you? They met with me on conference calls. Interesting. Uh, Senator with, oh, I'm sorry, I thought. <clears throat> Okay, are you aware that four former governors, bipartisan, wrote a letter about this gas pipeline? I am not aware of that. Oh, you haven't read any, you, you haven't read in any newspapers or any media that the fact that Republicans Christine Todd Whitman and Governor Thomas Kane, Democrats, former governors Florio and Brendan Byrne wrote a, a letter of opposition signed by all four of them arguing that the pipeline would compromise the integrity of the Pinelands. You never heard of that letter and you haven't read it. Senator, this is the first I've heard of the letter and I have not read it, but I do promise you that if I'm confirmed, I will read the letters. Would a letter like that influence your feelings about the pipeline? Any facts would influence my decision because my decision is going to be made on facts. I have just <clears throat> a couple more questions. Do, are there newspapers in your area? <laughs> Senator, yes. Okay. Uh, you, I. I don't know, if, because you don't seem to be aware of anything else that has to do with the Pinelands, that you're replacing Robert Jackson and Darcy Rohan Green, both of whom have expertise in environmental matters and have been actively involved. Do you think that you bring any special qualifications to serve 
on the Pine Lands Commission, given the kind of people that you're replacing? Yes, ma'am. What would those qualifications be? My mother's farm, where I was raised, is in the Pine Lands. I've enjoyed the Pine Lands. I respect the Pine Lands. I've made a livelihood for my family working the land. I have served the public for 20 years. So I, I do have a service knowledge as yourself has. I, I bring integrity and a willingness, a willingness to stand up as the seven to seven did and make honorable decisions based on my job as a commissioner, not on outside influence. Okay, are you currently still the mayor of Hanover? Yes, ma'am. And you live in the Pinelands? No, my farm borders the Pinelands. Okay. My parents' farm where I grew up, and my mother still, at 87, she still farms it, is in the Pinelands. Okay. <clears throat> so given the fact that you're a public official and you border the Pinelands, and you are up for an appointment on the Pinelands Commission, you have not heard anything about the seven to seven vote, about the ethics issue that disqualified one voter, about the letter from the four governors. I just want to make sure that you're answering that question the way I thought you answered it. No, I, I didn't answer it the way you thought I answered it. I had told uh, Senator Bateman that I was aware of a seven to seven vote I was aware of the want of a pipeline to go through, and I was aware of the company, I believe it's called South Jersey Gas. After that, after that, I was asked to accept a nomination and to be an unbiased decision maker, shall I be confirmed? I don't want to be, it's, it, it, it's just wrong. It's just wrong to prepare yourself for something ahead of time when you only have an opinion of facts. I have to work with the, the actual facts and make decisions based on that. I've, I've deliberately avoided Pinelands issues to be able to come in unfettered by opinions. Has, uh, ha has your mayor or your council taken any kind of a Pineland stand on anything? No, ma'am. Okay. Do you have any kind of a connection with South Jersey or with South Jersey Gas or with the BL England um, electric generation facility, which is owned by Rockland Capital that wants this gas line Connected. Absolutely none. Okay. Have you done, are you going to do any research into the pipeline proposal if you're confirmed? If I'm confirmed, I will do as much research through every avenue that I can come up with because I realize the importance of this issue. Okay, what, can I ask you, what newspapers cover Hanover? Um, Trentonian, the Trenton Times, and the Burlington County Times. Thank you. I have no more questions at the moment. I have some, a few questions, then we'll go to Senator Card now. I'll, I'll take some, and then we'll go to you. Okay, Senator Card now. I have a few questions, and then we'll go to you. Uh, so you perceive yourself to be a juror in the way you approach this position, correct? No, I don't perceive my, myself to be a, a juror as much as I will, shall I be confirmed, I will be a decision maker. 
and I use that, I'm not a highly educated person, and I use that analogy because I could, I could understand that. And I wanted, once again, as I, as I told Senator Weinberg, I want to come on board, I want to come on board, be right at the center, and then make a decision based on facts. So if I wasn't clear, I apologize. Okay. Because it appears to me that we, not that it appears, you are being asked to be a commissioner. And so one of the ways we make a decision as to if we are going to vote for you or not is to determine your knowledge that you bring to the position so that you can have a critical analysis of whatever information is being put forward to you when you become a commissioner. So it is very important what you know about the Pine Lands. I think uh, your issue that you deliberately avoided gathering any information about the Pine Lands, that means you have taken an affirmative act in order not to be informed. And when um, the commissioners come forward or people on the commission, you want to know that they are informed so that they then can make informed decisions going forward. So this is where my questions are going. Do you uh, know anything about energy policy and needs? Energy policy and needs. As a formal way, no. I, once again, I'll go back to what you had just said. When commissioners come in front of you, you want to know that they know what they're doing. But I'm not a commissioner yet. When I am a commissioner, I, understand what I will you're answer not, these questions. Sir, I understand you're not a commissioner yet. And I understand you won't become a commissioner unless we vote for you. Absolutely. And so my point went to, in order to determine if you should be a commissioner, we have to take in and evaluate what kind of information you have and how you, much you are or not informed on the subject matters that you will uh, be um, rendering judgment. So what I want to know from you, in a formal or informal way, this is not about education or who's not educated or who is. This is about who's informed, who's not informed, and who has chosen not to be informed. So this is not about education. I want to know, do you know anything about the energy and policy needs as it relates to the Pine Lands? The energy and policy needs as it, as it relates to the Pine Lands. What I know is there's a proposed pipeline. I, I'm not aware that there's an energy need in the Pine Lands. Are you aware of the broader discussion of uh, energy and policy needs? I'm aware that the Pine Lands is being asked to accept this pi pipeline to send gas to parts of the state that want gas. It's, it's, my knowledge is that simplistic. Do you feel, what is your uh, position or feeling about any additional development of the Pine Lands? My feeling? I like the Pine Lands the way they are. I think the Pine Lands, Pine Lands to me are New Jersey's Yellowstone Park. And developing in the Pine Lands, 
is not good. I'm not, I'm not a fan of it. Do I understand that there's been development in the Pinelands? Yes, I do. Does it make me feel good? No. So you have made some uh, opinions about the Pineland based upon whatever information that you have. I, I've made opinions about land in New Jersey, and I stand on that because when I became the mayor of New Hanover Township, there wasn't one inch of land preserved. We've preserved a measurable percentage. I'm going to say 40% of the open land in New Jersey is now farmland preserved. So it's not an opinion exclusive to the Pinelands. It's my life. So with respect to that, uh, are you aware of the environmental regulations? Am I aware that there's a core of the Pinelands, a fringe of the Pinelands, and they have different um, regulations? Yes. Could I recite those regulations I, to you today? No. No, I didn't ask for you to recite them. I asked, are you aware of the environmental regulations oh, yes, with I respect am. to the Pinelands? Yes. You are? Yes. One last question. Uh, do you think that it is right that you are helping to remove two of the commissioners that you maintain are free thinkers? It's not, it's not something that makes me happy to replace another person. It's not, if, if the person's term is up, then it's, it's another nomination. Do I bring something to the, to the commission? Shall I be appointed? Yes. Um, it's, I wish we could both be on the commission, actually. To take someone else's place is not, I don't jump up and down and, and, and be happy. But to sit on the Pinelands Commission and having lived, played in the Pinelands, it's been home, smell the Pinelands. Go to Sheep Pen Hill and, 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 and smell that after a rain. It's, it's a, it's a good place to be, and it's a good place for me to want to be, to keep the Pinelands. And, and one last question. How, do you know how your name was submitted to the governor to nominate? I'm not Did aware of that. No, I don't know how wait, my, wait, I'm not I, sure I, how my name was submitted because my first call was from the governor's office. So uh, have you discussed uh, the issues of the Pine Land Commission and what you would face with anyone? My wife. And the governor's office did not have anyone oh did not have anyone meet with you face to face no when you had the conversation and how many conversations did you have on the telephone with the governor's office i would say throughout this five or six and in those five or six conversations uh, did the governor's office ever either discuss or mention uh, the governor's position on the pipeline? No one has asked my opinion on that until today, and Senator Bateman asked me. That was the first I've been asked. And when you had the discussions with the governor, did they ask you with respect to uh, your background if you had any knowledge of the New Jersey's overall energy needs? No. Did they ever ask you if um, you had any uh, knowledge of uh, the issue of energy needs and environmental regulations in general? 
No. Did they ever ask you if you were on the commission? I'll withdraw that. Did they ever ask you if you have read any newspaper articles about the commission the, and the pipeline? I was not asked that question. Did they ever ask you if you uh, would uh, oh, did they ever ask you what your position on the development was in the Pinelands? I was not asked that question. What were you asked? I was asked if I would serve. And hmm, was, was told I would uh, be getting a questionnaire from the Judiciary Committee, uh, which I got. I filled it out and I sent it back. And I was basically told I would be here today. And then I got a phone call from this office to be here today. So five or six telephone calls you had with the governor's office in uh, sum and substance, they told you you were going to be on it, you'd have a, a questionnaire and you're here today. Yes, I was told to fill, fill, the, question, fill the questionnaire out as you know, honestly and correctly as I could. Um. Now, and I'm going to ask you a general question and this is the last question. It has nothing to do with education or not being educated. But I, I want to know, what's your position? Given the technical decisions that the Pineland Commission will face, do you think that appointees of this body should have relevant, specialized technical knowledge? I believe that the commission should be a cross-section. People that have professions that could help, okay. people that have life experience that could help. Um, to just have professionals could be devastating because it would be like having 15 computers that didn't see, didn't, didn't see and didn't know and didn't have the life experience of what you're really doing, um, what you're really taking. Um, and that's what I feel I bring in, in, instead of formality, maybe logic, um, maybe reality. Thank you very much, sir. Mr. Rourke, why do you want to do this job? Could I answer that with a, with a question back to you? You can answer it any way you want, but I'll ask you again if I don't get the answer. What? Why do you want to do it? Why would you want to be the mayor of Cookstown where when you're going down the road on your tractor, the neighbors wave you over to tell you the garbage man didn't pick it up? It's, I, 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 I see the Pinelands, I see the Pinelands as a non-replaceable I don't want to use the word resource, but a non-replaceable part of the nature in the most urbanized state in the Union. Why would I be owning a farm in Cookstown and raise the lot size to 10 acres because I thought it was the best thing to do for our base encroachment and for the quality of life. It's, the, the pine lands are the same as the land that I farm. They're a resource. Um, it was, why did we, why did we make agriculture in New Hanover the most prominent business when it, my farm's worth a lot more to sell it for houses? I don't want to sell it for houses. Okay, um, we have very wet soils in New Hanover. We have a nitrate dilution study that shows that we're built out and to, without sewage to put houses and houses and houses in there be horrible to the people that bought those houses. 
So I put a position paper together, recommend it to the planning board, make the lots bigger. And we have a beautiful town to live in. Please come out one day. We've made the New Jersey Monthly Magazine several years, best places to live. And it's, it's, it's because there's, there's a lot more beauty in this world than skyscrapers. And like I had told vice chairperson to go out in the pines after a rain and just smell that pine air is irreplaceable. So that's why it would be an honor to serve on the Pine Lands Commission. Okay, thank you. Senator Carnelli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I believe from everything that I know, you have been a lifetime farmer. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And in that profession, have you learned something about soil, rotation of crops, thoughts of that type? Absolutely. And so you've learned something about kind of the laws of nature and how one must take care of a property for it to continue to be productive. Absolutely. For farming purposes. Yes. And then you became a public official. How did you sort of get into that public official role? Hmm. Well, it was a desire. It was a desire to serve the community where we live. Our town has less than 300 homes. It's a small community, it's a beautiful community, and it was a desire to serve where I live and work. How long have you been a mayor? Excuse me? How long have you been a mayor? Um, since 2006, I believe. As a mayor, you frequently will make statements at public meetings, encourage policies of one or another type to be uh, enacted within your community. Have you ever made any kind of statement to your recollection that could lead anyone to believe that you wanted to see 10-story buildings in the Pinelands or you wanted to do other things which would degrade uh, the area from an environmental perspective? Absolutely not. I want to, if you haven't already gotten this thought, a lot of folks on this committee have already asked you questions with respect to essentially prejudgment on an issue. Are you aware that some wild statements have been made to members of this committee, some of them writing, that you are prejudiced with respect to any issue that might come before the Pinelands Commission? I am prejudiced to any issue that might be. Are you aware that this is being represented by some who have communicated with this committee? If anyone has told you that I have a prejudice to any no, that's not my question. issue, that's not my question. They have told you, you a lie. Are you aware that they're saying these things oh, about you? No. No. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Senator. I, I thought you were asking no. my answer to that. I'm sorry. No, no I'm not I, aware of that. I've heard you answer that a lot of times already. But I'm going to be a little bit repetitive because I want to get very specific. We were given a statement by a person who I expect may testify named Jacqueline Rhodes. And at one of the paragraphs, she says, it is clear the individuals you are considering today, which is you and one other, are expected to vote for the South Jersey gas pipeline deal regardless of whether it violates or respects the Pinelands protection rules. 
Is that true? That is absolutely false. Thank you. I don't have any other questions. I'd like to get back, if I may, to how your thought processes are going to work because you don't have any preconceived notions. You are completely unaware, if I understand your sworn testimony, completely unaware of uh, the letter from the four former governors of the issues around the ethics question about how one vote was disqualified, et cetera. Okay, so let's say for argument's sake, your um, nomination gets released from committee and next voting session of the Senate, we vote for you. And the next meeting of the Pinelands Commission is two weeks off. What will you do during those two weeks? You will still maintain your innocence about any preconceived notion until you get to the meeting, or will you now feel free to do research now that you've been approved that you couldn't do before you were approved sometime between now and the next meeting? How will you handle the, the issues? Or are you going to have to wait for the meeting and hear whatever you hear at the meeting? Senator, if the Judiciary Committee would see fit to approve me. I would immediately, and I don't, I don't have 24 hours a day, but I would immediately dedicate every minute that I would have available, and I would find time to be available. I'm not saying that to be cute and that, oh, I didn't have time. No, I would make time to be available to bring myself up to speed on the issues that were going to come in front of the Pinelands Commission more quickly. And also, if there was something that we knew was coming up down the line, start preparing for that. Because at that point, I would either have to come in totally prepared to make a decision, ask the commission, hold to the next time to make a decision because I'm not prepared. Um, and I want to come in prepared. I want to come in to be able to sit down on an equal basis with every other commissioner and ask questions, have my information, have my facts, and get the appropriate answers from, as I had discussed with Vice Chair Person Gill, there's people that have expertise that I would ask them. If there was someone that had expertise on um, an endangered species, because we have those, I would ask. But I would have the facts to ask the appropriate questions of the appropriate members, fact givers. And yes, I would come up, come up to speed to do my job. Okay, so if you, that's based upon if you were approved and before the commission meets, you're going to do research. Yes. But having been nominated for this commission with no face-to-face -face interviews, a couple of phone conversations, you never thought about looking into any of the issues that might come before this commission or that might be surrounding your appointment? I thought just the opposite. I thought just the opposite. I wanted to stay away from opinions, op-eds, or someone coming over and whispering in my ear. I don't want that. I, I will make a decision that I can give a rationale and hold my head up about. And if I can't do that, I will step aside. Because you take an oath, and that's what you do. 
Okay, Senator Smith. Just a couple, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mayor, overall, what's your opinion of the Pinelands Act? Do you think it's been good for South Jersey or bad for South Jersey? I think the Pinelands Act was not good for South Jersey, was good for the entire state of New Jersey. It was good for the entire region. Uh, the, the Pinelands Act, the, the Pinelands Act and the Farmland Preservation has brought a belt where I live in central New Jersey of beautiful rural land that you don't have anywhere else. So I, you, think, I, you think the impact's been very good? Pardon? You think the impact's been very good? May I, may I give you a little history? Sure. When the Pinelands first came in, oh, my dad, he didn't like it, didn't like it, didn't like it. And that spurred my interest in it. And when I look at the impact of the Pinelands, Joseph Wharton was so far ahead of his time when he bought the Wharton track for water, which is part of the Pinelands. The, the Pinelands Act is a greater act than when it was put in because as water and resources become more scarce, that Pine Lands Act becomes more vital. Mm -hmm. Is your town in the Pine Lands? The civilian portion of our town is not. The what, you, the what portion? The civilian portion. We, we're, the, we're the host community to McGuire Air Force Base and Fort Dix. Actually, Fort Dix borders my farm and the Pinelands comes into Fort Dix, into the Browns Mills, Pemberton area. But there's no civilian portion of our town in the Pinelands. Okay, has there been any, any impact on the development? Your, your town is New Hanover, Hanover yes. right? Yes. Has there been any impact on New Hanover? Because you're outside, the, the, that civilian portion is outside the Pinelands area. Has that promoted development in your town, in that portion or not? No, no. All right, you sit on the land use board for New Hanover, right? Yes. And what's your general view of development in New Hanover? My general view of development? In New Hanover. In, yeah. New, in New Hanover. Right. We have, we have worked with Burlington County to be more of a regional with an adjoining town that has water and sewer. The development in New Hanover has been an average, an average of one home a year. Would you like to see more rateables in New Hanover? Would I like to see more rateables in New Hanover? Yes, that's the question. Um, not particularly. No. Not particularly. You're one of the few mayors I've heard say that. Usually mayors are saying, I want more rateables so I can cut my taxes. Or at least that's what they believe. But uh, well, I, I, will, I will take you at your word. The, um, so overall, the Pinelands Act has no impact on your town, other than McGuire Air Force Base is in it. McGuire and Fort Dix, yes. Yeah, okay. The um, Senator Greenberg, I, I'm sorry, uh, Weinberg, we don't have a Senator Greenberg. Senator Weinberg um, uh, asked you the question if any member of your family uh, was, had, was an employee of South Jersey Gas or BL England. Let me ask, is that also true of extended family? Cousins, in-laws, outlaws, no one, no one has an employment relationship? To the best of my knowledge, and I think I'm 100% accurate, I don't have anyone, my wife's family, my children's in-laws, uh, no association no whatsoever. Okay. All right. And then lastly, the, uh, uh, there's been a number of questions from members, um, well, actually not, not lastly, but almost lastly. Uh, you've been asked a number of questions about has anyone talked to you about this pipeline issue, and I, they were asked about this person, that person, or that person, or that office. Let me just ask you the blanket question. Has anyone ever talked to you about the pipeline issue that's currently in front of the, the uh, Pinelands Commission? Absolutely no. Okay. And then lastly, I see you're on a list of, uh, I think you're on a list of mayors in support of... 
make the decision not to read or be informed about anything with respect to the Pinelands. When I got a telephone call from my mom that said that the Burlington County Times, I, I'm the sorry, Burlington sir, County I Times can't. had an article that uh, rubber stamp Dennis Rohr was going on the uh, Pinelands Commission list of nominees, and I decided right then and there, if people that don't even know me are going to call me names, I had just better stay out of everything until um, I come before this board. When, on what date, or at least month, did you make the decision to deliberately uh, avoid any information with respect to the Pinelands? Whatever date that newspaper was, and I could not give you a date time was it specific Was last today. year? It's probably the beginning of this year, I would say. So you think the beginning of this year, which we at least can ag agree that the beginning of this year is January, right? I believe so. Okay. And you then made a concerted effort not to, uh, de uh, not concerted, I'm sorry, that's my word. Your word is deliberate. Yes. Uh, effort uh, not to be informed about what was going on in the Pinelands. Yes. Okay. When were you first contacted by the governor's office to be nominated or replaced? I couldn't give you a, a date specific now. Well, I'm not asking specific. For, I'm not ago. asking for specifics. Hmm. If was it before? The article was in the newspaper that your mother informed you of? Was it before it was January? Just, just around that time. It was around the same time because when, when I was asked, it was shortly after, it was uh, in, the, in the paper, and you know, that was it. So when you were asked, do uh, you think it was sometime in December when you uh, first were asked by the governor? I can't. I can't answer that one. I, I have no recollection of the, the months. Time goes on. I know time goes on, but isn't, a, isn't a, and I'll just ask you this as to be, not to be argumentative. I know how to be, but this is not to be argumentative. Thank you. When you, <laughs> when you received the call from the governor's office, uh, was that a big deal, so to speak? Well, if you're a farmer Am that you know, thinks that, wow, I may have something to offer, mm -hmm. and the governor's office feels I could have something to offer, mm -hmm. yeah, it, You had, you had to remember to be humble because you felt like hmm, someone, someone is reaching out and you do have life skills that you could bring somewhere. Okay, and you know why I'm asking you the question because I know you're a farmer, but you're also a mayor. You're a, an executive. You um, deal with dates and uh, important events, so, um, as the mayor, had you ever received a call from the governor's office? As a mayor? In my position as mayor? Yep. Um, yeah. Okay. And in your position as mayor, had you ever received, and when you received those calls from the governor's office, did you have conversations? No, I, I, and really, I didn't see the reason for the call. Okay. So this call would have been unusual, asking you to uh, be on the commission. It was different than the other calls you may have had from the governor's office. Yeah, this one was to Dennis Rohr, not, like I said, 
the call that I'm recalling from the governor's office, I was like, uh, yeah, okay. Um, okay. And I remember what that was. Okay. And I only asked you that to see if we could uh, get a more definitive period of when the governor called you in relationship to when you decided deliberately uh, to not be informed about the pine lands. But if you can't remember, I'm sure we can get that information from an independent source. So thank you very much. Sure. Okay. I don't see any other questions. So we're going to uh, excuse you, uh, Mr. Rourke, to the front row. You can take a seat over there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, and next, I will call up. As I had suggested earlier, we do the two, and then we would talk about uh, what time we have remaining for comments from the public. Uh, Robert S. Barr to be a member of the Pinelands Commission. And I understand that uh, Senator Van Drew is here to introduce uh, Mr. Barr to the members of the committee. So uh, Senator Van Drew, why don't you take a seat? And uh, before you go begin, we'll have uh, Mr. Barr sworn in. If you could turn on that mic for him and uh, We'll have the oath given. Is it on? Okay, that's good. Red is on here. Okay. Yep. Good afternoon. Do you good swear afternoon. or affirm that the testimony you're about to give here today is true, correct, complete, to the best of your knowledge, information, and belief? Yes. Thank you. Senator Vandrew. Thank you, Chairman, and thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak about Mr. Barr. He is my friend, and I am proud to say that he is my friend. Uh, somebody had suggested that we're related. We are not. He's better looking. But um, we are friends, and I think that he would be an excellent, excellent member of the Pine Lanes Commission. I want to tell you just a little bit about him, because he's not going to speak about himself in that way. He's a humble guy. Uh, Bobby's had considerable challenges in his life. He has cerebral palsy. Uh, he decided at a young age that he was going to overcome those challenges. Educationally, he was the first individual human being to go through the Ocean City school system, the regular school system. He was the first. Um, to make it through, but not only did he make it through with those challenges, he graduated Ocean City High School with honors. He then decided he was going to go to Stockton College. He went to Stockton College and again he was told by many individuals that it might not be appropriate or he couldn't do it. He didn't care. He was on a mission. He worked hard. He was focused. He graduated Stockton and again not only did he graduate Stockton College, he graduated Stockton College with honors. He's been an advocate for the intellectually disabled, and he's worked uh, in my office, and some folks have asked about that. He has paid zero dollars. He is a volunteer in my office. He gets nothing at all, maybe once in a while a soda, um, but he gets nothing at all for working in my office. And part of that process was working for the intellectually disabled, which is one of his passions. Um, it was clear that in deep southern New Jersey, there were not the appropriate amount of advocates or advocacy for particularly single parents who had an intellectually disabled child and they needed help and just didn't have the representation, didn't have the help. Through his work, um, he helped to establish the Regional Support Planning Council number 10, which was specific to deep southern New Jersey so that they did have a voice, that they did get some help, and it has made a difference. He's spent three years, he did sp spend in the past three years on the Board of Trustees of the Ocean City Exchange Group. This group is a group that's committed to the prevention of child abuse. He was passionate in the work that he did there. He was beloved, by the way, and he is beloved, by the way, by Democrats and Republicans alike, even though he is a Democrat, both sides of the aisle. He is a very nonpartisan, just passionate guy in what he believes. Uh, he was just recently appointed to the Housing Authority, again, by a mixed group of people, the Housing Authority for Ocean City, which is the main vehicle of supplying affordable housing for that city, and he's been working along there and is concurrently, I believe, going to courses for that as we speak. He was on the Utility Advisory Commission uh, and actually was involved with establishing the Earth Day celebration over a number of years, and he was on that Utility Advisory Commission for four years. I know there's a lot of passion in this room, and there's a lot of discussion about a particular project, and I understand that, but, you know, uh, respectfully, I believe, as a senator, the responsibility here is to evaluate the value of a candidate. I will tell you and I know all of you quite well, 
I do not know how Mr. Barr is going to vote on any project that might come along on the Pinelands Commission. I have no sense of it, and I haven't spoken to him about that, nor will I do that because I hope that he does get to be on the Pinelands Commission. What I do know about him is that he's an amazing guy that has overcome unbelievable obstacles to be where he is, and I do know that over the years he's worked with me, well before this project came along, he had asked to be on the Pinelands Commission or a similar commission, but wanted to serve at the state level, quite frankly, in a commission that was important and particularly important to South Jersey. He's not a Philadelphia lawyer. He's not an attorney. He's a young man with a passion who's overcome tremendous obstacles, and he is my friend, and I'm proud to say he's my friend, and I hope you will give him due consideration. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Senator Van Drew. Okay, Mr. Barr, would you please address the committee with your opening remarks? I am just extremely humbled and honored to be here today, and if confirmed, I just really look forward to getting to work to protect, to protecting, preserving, and defending the Pinelands National Reserve, and that's really all I have to say. I'm happy to answer any questions that you all may have. Thank you very much. And after my own heart, believes in brevity. Okay, any questions for the nominee? Senator Cardinale. One, thank you for subjecting yourself to the questioning of this committee. No problem. That's why you'll never see me up there. People have asked the other nominee a series of questions. I'm going to ask you some of those same questions. Have you read the mission statement of the Pinelands? Yes. Are you in concert with that mission statement? Yes. Have you any preconceived notions about anything that may come before that commission? No. You heard, you were here, I think, when I asked the question about wild statements that are being made about both you and the prior witness. Uh, is there any truth to those statements? No. I don't have any other questions. Thank you, Senator Carnelli. Okay. Senator Weinberg. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for being here, and thank you for your advocacy, in, uh, particularly in the disabled community where voices are sorely needed, and we're glad that we've had your voice. You're very welcome. Thank but you. But I would like to really concentrate on the commission for which you are being nominated today. Do you know how you came to be nominated for the finalists? Uh, as Senator Van Drew alluded to, I'm, I had brought to his attention several years ago uh, that I would be interested in serving on this commission. And I believe he submitted my name to the governor's office for consideration. So it, it actually you expressed an interest in serving on the commission? Yes, ma'am. Can you tell me why? Because it is a world-renowned um, preservation, a beauty of our state, of our nation, and quite frankly, our world. And it would just be an honor to preserve, protect, and defend that um, that beautiful uh, area that we are so blessed to have in New Jersey. I, I assume that you've reviewed what the mission of the Pinelands Commission is? Yes. And do you agree with it? Yes. Okay. Have you ever had any dealings with the commission as an applicant or in any other official capacity? No, ma'am. Anyone who has had an application before the Pinelands Commission? To the best of my knowledge, I do not. To a meeting of the Pinelands Commission? No. Do you have any particular views of the Commission today? Uh, no. Okay, you heard my questioning of the other nominee. So along those same lines, I'd like to find out, have you read newspaper articles about the potential of this pipeline going through the Pinelands? Prior to my nomination, yes, I have. 
I've done my best to remove myself uh, from that uh, prior to being, uh, after being nominated, but prior to that, yes, I have. So prior to being nominated, you have read? Yes. Okay. Did you, um, you, you were nominated how long ago? Uh, I believe January, February, uh, I'm not sure. Be familiar with the letter from the four, four the bipartisan letter Absolutely. from the four former governors? Yes. Okay, well, you're obviously much more up on current events than the other nominee is. Did that letter have any influence or would it have any influence on how you feel about the potential of a pipeline through the finance? Absolutely. All those individuals who wrote that letter are respected by me. They're governors of the state of New Jersey. So sure, I, val I certainly value their opinion. Yes. So it would have an influence on you? Yes. Yeah. I assume a positive influence. Yes. Okay. Do you understand anything about any of the folks or the person that you are being nominated to replace? Do I understand anything yeah, about him? About their, their environmental uh, credentials and their years of service on the Pinelands? No. How did you find out about your nomination? I was called by the governor's office and told that I was going to be uh, nominated by Governor Christie to fulfill a seat on the Pinelands Commission. You have, uh, how many phone conversations did you have with whoever called you? Two, three, and maybe. Any face-to-face -face meetings? No, ma'am. No. So they called and told you they were nominating you, and did they give you any reasons or ask you any questions about your interest in serving? Uh, did they ask me what? Any que any, they called to tell you that the governor was planning to nominate you, and did the, a follow-up, did they ask you any questions or give you any reasons for your nomination? They asked me would I be interested to which I said absolutely, and they did inform me that the governor felt as though uh, I was a qualified individual to take the seat. Uh, what his reasons are for that, they did not specify. Were and to be honest, I was so flattered. Uh, to be nominated was not a phone call that I was expecting. Uh, I did not follow up out of sheer just shock that, you know, I received a phone call from the governor's office of the state of New Jersey nominating me, and I just wanted to know, you know, what did I have to do to move the process forward, to which they said they would um, get back to me, and um, they did. Or someone, I believe someone from this committee did. Were uh, were you familiar with this, what had taken place at the Pinelands, the well-known seven-to-seven vote, and the um, one person who was recused for some um, questions that still haven't been explained? I was aware of the score of the vote, as you said, seven-to-seven to one. Um, I was not aware of any ethics. Uh, uh, breach or anything that you had alluded to or added in, in the earlier questioning, uh, that was news to me. Uh, but yes, I was aware of the vote. Uh, how do you feel generally about any development in the Pinelands? Do you have any feelings about that? My feeling about development in the Pinelands is that we have to tread cautiously and carefully when doing so. It is a beautiful uh, jewel of the state of New Jersey and the world. I know that it is recognized by the United Nations for its beauty, uh, and I wouldn't want to do anything to, at all to um, ruin that or, or to take that away. So 
uh, I would tread extremely cautiously um, when, when dealing with development and things of that sort. Last question. Do you believe that you've been nominated in order to change the vote, that very close vote? Well, if that's, if that's why they have nominated me, Senator, they're taking a very risky uh, proposition. So can you say that? I said, I don't know that that's why they nominated me, but if that is the reason, it's a risky proposition. First of all, uh, let me tell you that I think uh, your uh, advocacy for the issues that are important to you and the way you have um, undertaken taken them is a really um, very proud and you are to be congratulated. Thank you. And so I am focusing strictly on the Pine Lands Commission and uh, understanding um, your advocacy in other areas. Okay. You, you are, uh, or you were, vice chairman of the utility advisory, um, is it commission for yes. Ocean City, right? It is the utility advisory commission of the city of Ocean City, yes, ma'am. Okay. And in that capacity, um, uh, did you have any, uh, interaction with the Pine Lands Commission or issues as related to the Pine Lands Commission? No. Do you know anything about the energy policy and needs uh, for the state of New Jersey? On a very peripheral basis. And when yeah. you say peripheral, peripheral as to what? I mean, I support, I would certainly support looking into such things as wind and solar energies. I think that uh, renewable energies is certainly something that needs to be explored. Um, you know, I certainly oppose uh, fracking, waste dumping here in New Jersey, things of that sort, but those are just personal opinions. As, as pertinent to the Pine Lands, uh, I'm not familiar with any certain needs there. <clears throat> And with you indicated that you spoke to Senator Van Drew and you said you wanted to be on the Pine Lands before you received the call, correct? Oh yes, it was years before. Okay. And why? What were your what were your uh, qualifications that you thought you had uh, that would uh, well I I make had you always, a commissioner? In a, um, say that again. That would. Uh, make you a good candidate for commissioner for the Pine Lands? Well, I, I had done a little research online in regards to um, the Pine Lands, and I, I just felt as though that is something that I would want to, uh, that I would want to be a part of. It is a beautiful place. It is, uh, as I previously said, a jewel of the city of New Jersey, and I'm proud that it's here. Uh, and if you all, you know, confirm me, it would be a flattering, humbling honor to, uh, to have the right to protect, preserve, and defend the Pine Lands. And just three more questions. Were you ever interviewed face-to-face -face by the gov anyone from the governor's office with respect to being on the commission? No. Uh, how many telephone conversations did you have with the governor's office? Two that I can remember. And did the governor's office, whoever you had the conversations with, uh, did they discuss with you the pipeline? No. Did they ask you what your qualifications were to be on the Pine Lands? No, ma'am. Did they discuss with you uh, any issues of your prior knowledge of uh, the Pine Lands? No. Did they ask you why you felt that you could serve on the Pine Lands and what uh, you would bring to the commission if you were given the opportunity? No. Did they ask you any policy questions uh, with respect to the Pine Lands? No. Were you asked about any questions with respect to your views on energy policy uh, at all? No.
Were any inquiries made with respect to your understanding, knowledge, or information as relates to environmental regulations? No. Uh, were, you, um, were you told by the governor's office or anyone that after you were nominated, you should not uh, seek to be informed or read papers with respect to the issues of the Pineland? Absolutely not. Did you make an independent decision to, um, in, in, correct me if I'm wrong here. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Let okay. me ask you this question. It is my understanding from your testimony that you stated after you were nominated, you then um, stopped being informed or reading papers about the Pinelands. I, I stopped reading newspaper articles about issues that may become before the Pinelands. I read several things about the Pinelands itself but in regards to newspaper articles or editorials or anything of that sort, out of respect to this process that you all have and the process of the Pinelands Commission, I did my best to completely remove myself um, from any uh, newspaper articles because as you all are aware, sometimes you know what you read in the media um, can be twisted or, or, or not factual. And if I'm blessed to be put on the Pinelands Commission, it will be my responsibility to make a decision based solely upon the facts and what is presented before me. So I did not want to um, do my best to not have any preconceived notions about some of those issues. And of course I know what some of those issues are, so I did my best to remove myself from that situation. Were you told by anyone not to read newspapers? No. With respect to the Pinelands? No. Were you told by anyone that this committee required you not to read anything about the commission once you were nominated by the governor's office. I, I did read several things about the commission um, once I was nominated. I, I, I want to make sure you understand that. It's, I, I stayed away from letters to the editor, newspaper articles, that sort of thing. Um, but I did a tremendous amount of research on my own um, based on the commission and uh, when it met, the history of it, how it was created, um, that sort of thing. But no, I was not told by anyone not to read anything. It was a conscious decision on my behalf. And my question was also, uh, did anyone tell you that this committee, once you were nominated, required that you not read anything? No. So you came up with this position on your own? Absolutely, 100%. I have no further questions. Okay, um, there are several sign-ups. We are not gonna call them today because we are going to hold the vote on these nominations for today, and we are gonna adjourn and uh, take further consideration as we go forward. With that, we're adjourned. Thank you for the nominees for your uh, time and patience and to everyone that's been here today. Thank you as well.